GIT 500 Research Design. At this point, you've thought about your problem statement, did some research into a lit review, a literature review, massage that problem statement, and you pretty much know what you want to study. Now you need to decide how you're going to study it, and that's what we call research design. Research design is a plan, a structure, and a strategy that is created to find answers to research problems or questions. It is a blueprint, a map, to help researchers get those answers. The functions of research de design are that they identify that plan for the study procedure how it's going to happen and the things that are needed are going to need to be done, the tasks. It also ensures that those procedures are, are, are good enough to get valid, objective, and accurate answers to those research questions. An operational plan is basically the plan within research design. So the research design plan is is called an operational plan because it's the plan by which the researcher operates. It contains details for the researcher, yourself if you're the researcher, and anybody else involved. So like in graduate school, if you do an applied project or a thesis at the end of your program, uh, you'll have a graduate com committee chair and that person will need to see your operational plan. It includes procedures that you plan to use to get the answers to your research questions. This operational plan should be so clear that someone could pick it up, pick up your study, pick up your operational plan, and replicate it exactly. The operational plan should include quite a few things. Of course, it needs to have the name of the study, which the t name or the title of the study should can be creative, but also should indicate what the study is about, what the topic is. Um, the type of study, and we'll talk more about that in the next lecture. Uh, these are just some examples, and you may recognize them. It also needs to include details about the study, including the study population. Who is it that you're going to study or what? But we'll assume it's people. Um, so say you decide you want to find out, uh, you know, graphic designers' opinions on accessible websites or web designers on accessible websites. That would be your study population. That'd be a pretty big population because that would mean every web designer in the world. Um, you would need to figure out how to identify those that population. Um, that would mean not that you need to identify each individual person, but you need to figure out how would I get in touch? Like how do I know who is a web designer? Period, right? Uh, that's where a sample of the population becomes important. Uh, again, we mentioned this on another uh, lecture I did, that um, sometimes you have to pare it down. So the sample of the population here, we could say instead of just all web designers, we could say web designers in the city of Phoenix, Arizona. Now that would still be our, that's our study population. That would still be a very large population, and we probably couldn't get in touch with all of them, right? We probably couldn't even get survey results from all of them. So we would want to pare that down into a subgroup, which we call a sample. And we could say, of all the web designers in Phoenix, we're going to get, we're going to survey 50 of them. And then we can use the results of that sample and, and extrapolate it or extend it to the rest of the population. So, and this becomes important when we think about 
how we're going to identify them, but also how are we going to contact them? Are we going to get them through Facebook groups? Are we going to go on LinkedIn and do searches for web design? Are you like, how are we, what's our plan for contacting them? It doesn't mean you have had to already contact. It just means you have a plan for contacting them. It can be personal connections. It could be professional connections. Whatever it is, you need to have it in there. Um, you also need to figure out um, how you're going to get consent from them to participate. If you're just doing, if you're just doing surveys, that's pretty easy because you can put it at the header of the survey, and we'll talk about that in another um, lecture. Uh, or you can use actual consent forms. And remember, particularly if you're using minors, you also have to get their parents' um, consent. You need to talk about how are you going to collect data? Are you doing surveys? Are you doing interviews? Are you doing focus groups? Are you doing observation? Are you doing one or two or all of them? And why are you doing those? What's the, what is the purpose of doing those particular ones? Because they each have plus and minuses. And then uh, at least the beginnings of a, a list of participant questions that you're going to ask, whether it's survey or interview. And then you need to address any ethical issues, um, such as you are you want to use minors in your study, or prisoners, or it's your study is about a sensitive topic, and you want to make sure that or ensure that their identities are concealed, and there's um, you know it's completely anonymous. The functions of research design are this, that research design ensures that the procedures that are used are good enough to get valid, objective, and accurate answers to the research questions. We've already talked about cause and effect. Most research is a causality situation, that they are cause and effects. Most studies have at least one cause, maybe multiple. Um, it gets more complicated if you do that. You can't directly decide if something is affecting something else if you have a lot of ver independent variables. This is our independent variable. And remember, that's the thing that isn't going to change. You have multiple, you can have multiple variables, but those, each of those independent variables does not change through the research. Um, the thing that does change again is the dependent variable which is the person the situation or whatever that you're studying we also have other things that are not studied but can affect the main subject and these are called extraneous variables or random chance variables so here's an example um, if these were our research questions about the game of thrones which i know is older now but i assume everybody's at least heard of it um, you might want to find out who in your class, maybe GIT 500, maybe another one, is a fan of Game of Thrones. Why are they fans of the show? So those are our two research questions. In these research questions, what are our variables? Who's the study population? Well, let's think about that. Our study population would be, if you were talking about doing this, you want to know the, what the students in your, your, your classmates and one of your classes thinks. It's, that, it's those students. That is the student population. Now, that's going to be a very small population, so you wouldn't need to take a sample. Okay? Um, it, the population is very tightly defined. It's just those students in that class, and you know there's maybe 15 or 20. You don't need a sample for that one. The independent variables... Is the show overall, and then if you want to have sub variables or multiple independent variables, you might ask about characters, plot, costumes, and again, you don't want to have too many of those because it just muddies the water. Um, and then your dependent variable would be the student's feelings about the show. You could also have extraneous variables, such as maybe one of the student's cousin was an actor in the series, in the show. Or you could have random or chance variables. 
uh, such as the students being in weird moods when they were taking the survey. Maybe you didn't write a very good survey. Maybe the student taking the survey had distractions. A dog was barking in the back or um, they were eating while they did it. So there, those things you can't, you have no control over. Um, so you, and normally they're only going to throw your data off maybe a little bit, uh, particularly if you get more people in your study, but it's those first three here that we list study population, independent variables, dependent variable. All right. So in this one, we talked about the purpose of research design, why we do it and why we need it, what the functions of that research design is. Um, what operational plans are, and then again, causality and research design and how important it is and how, what part it plays in research.